Wow. I like that song. How many have seen the damage from the mountains of North Carolina? Have you seen it on your television, computer? It's unreal. If you have it, you need to look it up. It's unbelievable. Towns washed away. And when you see these towns, you'll hear towns. Of course, Asheville's a big town, but it's actually, it's actually way lower than these other towns. And some of these towns in the hollers and places like that, they're gone. The roads are gone. And that's where I go. That's where I'm at up there. The people, I know many of the people up that way. That's not where I'm from. I'm from about three hours over here. But that's where I go. And we actually had, uh, about two years ago, we purchased a little chapel, a little chapel up there in the mountains. And we turned it into a retreat, a place to go. And because churches were shutting down all across America. It's crazy. And they can't maintain them. You know, the people aren't there anymore. That's before the storm. And so uh, Kim and I worked hard. We fixed that little place up. And it's a place for people to lodge. And we've already had several people stopping by and taking a two-day break or an overnight break. And uh, we didn't even know if that thing survived. But it did. That little chapel survived. But now if we were to have been on the other side of the road, it wouldn't have survived because over there was closer to the, the rivers and the creeks. And every place up there has rivers and creeks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... Anyway, I say all that to say the man that wrote that song, The Broken Rose, he's a mountain man. He lives up in the mountains of Carolina. And I like a lot of his songs because they talk about nature. They're simple, but he puts Jesus in them, and I just sort of like them. Amen? He's also the man who wrote Sweet Beulah Land, and, and that's a great song. So anyway, I was glad we could sing it today. I'm, I'm just a little different today. We had that big storm, and... I've been 62 years. I ain't never had a flood. In two weeks, I had two now. So, you know, that'll do a little, I'll do a number on you a little bit. And then my son and my daughter's place and my mother-in-law's wasn't too bad, but probably had about an inch of water got up into her house. We tried to mop it all out and clean that up. But when you ain't got water and you ain't got power, it makes it tough. You can't put no fans out and blow nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it makes it a little tough. But we've managed. And uh, then our, we got a house and a guest house where we live, and it took on about three feet of water and with the first storm. And the bad thing is this. I had a truck, man. I had a really nice truck and uh, got it from the bass player. He drove it. He got it brand new. Then he took it to Nissan. And I said, you took it where I wanted to buy that truck. So I called Nissan, and I ended up buying that truck about a year ago. And I wouldn't let nobody eat in that truck. I wouldn't even let people ride in that truck. I love that truck. It was nice. Big old biggest Nissan Titan had everything on it. And so when Helene happened, Hurricane Helene, we didn't think that thing's hitting us. It didn't hit us. It was way up yonder. I'm watching TV on the news. I'm like, you know, just having a good old time. And then Kim says, man, that water's high out there, getting high out there on our canal. And I'm like, whatever, we're good. And then later it got up on the porch. And we started putting stuff up. I'm thinking we might get an inch or something in the house. We'll, we'll live. We'll make it. Well, then it came, kept coming up. And I said, Kim, you got to go because her van's low. And I said, you won't. And the, 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 I turned to look at my driveway. It's now the creek. The driveway became the creek. And then Oxford became Godfrey Creek. So I had her get on out of there. So I go in my Titan, and it's one of them fancy new trucks with the push button. So I did the old... And it would not start. So my truck got flooded. Thank God I had my old trusty Chevrolet in the yard. It cranked. The old kind that do this. Here's my recommendation. Find you one of these. Lord, help us. So yesterday they came and took my beautiful truck. It's totally took my truck away. And the, and the, and the, and the record guy was one dumb joker. Because he said, oh, this is a really nice truck. I really like these trucks. I'm like, I want to punch you in the mouth. How about that? <laughs> you don't think I like it, okay? Come on. Anyway, so but anyway, so we've had some floods, amen, yes or no? But it's life, and you just keep plugging along. Sometimes I, I've been thinking, man, a fire almost sometimes be better than a flood because then at least you don't have to touch all the mess and deal with it, but... But I know you still got a house, and you can build it back and make it, make it good again. So that's sort of where we're at. But God's been good to us. Amen. How many else in this room today? I didn't ask the first crowd. 
Anybody else in the old Inglewood area or in the Grove City area where your house was flooded? Can I see some hands? Your house was flooded? I didn't think so. Anybody? Okay, right here. Where are you got water in your house? Yeah, but that don't count. I mean, are you, li are you walking in it? Did it make it in your floor and everything? A little bit? Okay. Well, hopefully you can mop that up. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't get like three feet or something like that in your house. Yeah, because you're in a condo, aren't you? Yeah, I think, you're, I think you're probably okay out there. I hope you are, okay? Got in some garages and stuff. But unless you're in the old town or on one of these streets down in uh, down Grove City Way, uh, or, of course, north up here, that's where it really hit. But anyway, anyway just a little bit of that. Let's go into God's Word. You ready? Let's go. Ready? Let's go. Come on. Get my head straight. Favor. Are you all okay? You good? All right, let's go to God's Word. Are you all with me or no? Here we go. Let's go to the message. Favor with God and people. I'm in a series on favor. And I won't take too long today. I want to sing a little bit. I want to spend some time with you, and that's what I did today. But I do have a message, and I, would like, I preached it in the first service, and I'd like to give it to you as well. But I won't give it to you quite as long because I'm pretty wiped out. Okay? I'm sort of tired right now. But we'll make it. Favor. What is favor? It's approval, an act of kindness. It's to treat as a favor, and it's preferential treatment. Favor with God. Some people teach, I don't teach this, some people teach that you can just pray for favor on people. There goes your favor. Well, I don't believe that, okay? I think it's nice, I think, to bless people, to encourage people. I want that, but I just don't think favor is magical. Do you hear me or not? Say, I don't think favor is something magical, and you'll see from the message, okay? Now, we've been studying the book of James, looking at favor in the book of James. And last week's message, we're going to continue and we're moving forward. It was the war within, the war within. And this idea of favor comes from where Jesus, when he was 12 to 30 years old, it says he grew in wisdom, he grew in stature. Say it with me if you know it. And he grew in what? Favor with who? God and man or God and people. So favor is something we can grow in. You hear me? It's something that we can obtain, but it's something we have to work at. Now our salvation, we don't work at. Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the dead. There's no other way to get to heaven except Christ. However, I think favor with God and favor with people. And you might disagree with me, which is fine with me. But I think favor with God and favor with people is something you have to work at. It's going to require you doing some things. We know that's how it is with people, yes or no. Is that how it is with people? If you treat people, well, let's just say you ignore people. If you just ignore people, ignore people, ignore people, ignore people, ignore people, ignore people, ignore people you think you're going to find favor with those people, yes or no? If they keep saying hi to you, hi, and you, hi, and you, and hi, and you, they go quit saying what? Hi to you. If you go to a restaurant and you're just a pain in the rear with the waitress and the food ain't right and this ain't right, do you think they're going to really want you as their customer? Yes or no? Say. It's just not a way to treat people. Well, how about this? You think if you ignore God, you ignore His Word, you ignore your conscience which he gave you. You ignore his laws that he puts in his word. Okay? You think you're going to have his favor, yes or no? Say, yes or no? It makes no sense to me. And so that's the way I'm looking at this series. I'm trying to look at the book of James with the, with the idea of favor, having his approval, being one of his favorites, it's going to take some work on my part. And so that's the way we're looking at this subject. And this is something I wrote last week, just this statement. I'd like you to say it with me. Say it out loud. We are not going to have favor unless we what? You're not going to have a great marriage unless you fight for it. How many had to fight for your marriage before? Can some hands go up? Fight for it. How many had to work really hard at it? Say. How many had to make some sacrifices? How many had to say, I'm sorry, a bunch? That's what it is. You want favor? It's going to take some work and some effort. That's the angle I'm looking at it for. 
I'm not looking at you give, go to church, you get God's favor. You give money in the offering plate, you get God's favor. I'm not saying we're not blessed by coming here and that he doesn't bless us. But I just think, I don't know. I think a lot of it depends on your relationship with him and your relationship with people if you're going to have favor. So let's go look at it a little further now. Last week, now James gave this message. It's in the, it's in the book of James. There's a war that rages. And if you want to have favor with people, one of the number one ways you'll have favor with people is how you talk to them, how you communicate with people. Are y'all listening or not? Say. That's one of the number one ways you'll have favor. You'll have favor the way you talk to people. You'll have favor the way you look at people. Though if you've got teeth, show them, hello, okay. That's how you gain favor with people. Your manners, your mannerisms, your interactions with them. Got it? So, and we gave a message on the tongue. James had that in there, how our mouth, how we need to watch what we say, how we talk to people. But this message... This battle that you have inside of you, I'm the biggest sinner I know. I have my own sin. I have my own struggles that I'm dealing with. And the favor that I have with God depends a lot on how well I fight my battle inside of me. Does that make any sense? My passions, my lust, my desires, my wants. Okay? Things that nobody else can really see but God sees. And so this message is on fighting our own battle, our own personal battle. It's funny how we'll fight with somebody else. We'll, put our, we'll, we'll run somebody else down because we can see they're doing stuff wrong, but we don't take time to, what about you, man, or, or ma'am? And so that's what, that's what we're learning in this message today and, and last week as well. The fighting and personal wars that we face, they're from where? You're killing me. The fightings and wars we face are from where? They're from within. They're from within. As a man thinks in his heart, so what? Is he? Have you ever been thinking something about somebody and it came out of your mouth? <laughs> Say. I'm serious. We get a thought, and be careful, that thought don't ooze out your lips. <laughs> I'm horrible at this. That's why the Bible says take every thought captive. Amen? So anyway, so this battle within, we gave a whole message on that. I'm not going to re-preach it. But this was, this was the, the, one of the verses that we used last week. From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Say that with me. Come they not hence. Say it with me. Even your what? Lust. That war in your what? The idea is that war inside of you. Your own thoughts, your own desires, your own wickedness. I believe if we're going to have, have the favor with God that he wants us to have, we're going to have to fight for it. Now what do I mean fight? Not fight each other. Fight ourselves. Fight our passions. Fight our struggles. Is that making perfect good sense to people, yes or no? Well, that's what we're talking about. And it's, it's evident we all struggle I gave, I gave a little clue on mine in the first service. Now, I've got multiple struggles, okay? But one of my biggest struggles is my mind. My mind, okay? I don't know if it's because I'm a pastor, I'm a public speaker. I have no idea why it is. I don't know if it's the past trauma and pain I've had in my life and struggle and rejection and struggles and things like that. I don't know what it is. But I struggle with my mind. If you want to pray for me, pray for Pastor Gary's mind. And it's all right with me if you tell the Lord, he's crazy. Help him, Lord. He's crazy. Okay? I don't mind. I'm cool with that. But you know what I do? One of my biggest struggles with my mind is anticipating somebody else's reaction. I struggle with that. What do I mean by that? I'll just give you an example. Me and Kim I am very, very outgoing, a lot of personality, a lot of mouth. Kim ain't. 
And so I can be like, hey, 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 you know, and you know, I'm gonna be talking and, and this, and you know, I can make the biggest sale to her and whatever, and you know, it's really exciting and great, ain't it? Yeah, and there's no reaction. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so my mind says, she doesn't care. Because I'd already pictured she's going to be jumping up and down about this as much as I am. Or it could be I, I might say something, oh, well, you know, I'll do a job. I'll do a good job. I'll work real hard, work real hard. Am I boring you to tears? I'll work real hard. Maybe let's use Kim again. She ain't in the room, is she? Let's talk about her, okay? She shouldn't have left. But anyway... But I, say I'll work real hard. It could be work a job. It could be work around the house. It could be build something, make something, clean something, fix something. And my mind says, when she sees this, boy, she's going to really like this. She didn't even see it. And she's looking at it. Does that mean she's not thankful? No. No, it does not mean that. That's hard for my brain to compute. And you might say, well, that's no big deal. Well, it is a big deal when I give her a tongue lashing after that. <laughs> and I lose all the favor with her, right? It's like, yes or no? So I anticipate, I anticipate, uh, even on Sunday here, I'll preach a message. And I'll get done with the message. And I'll go home. And I can remember things I've said. Or I'll sometimes check out my message as I check out other pastors in the area. I do that. This is my job. This is what I do. I want to do a good job at it. I've been doing it for years. There's no change in me. I'm going to keep doing it. But I'll beat myself up over something I've said. You hear me or not? The battle of my mind. Does that make any sense? I've got other struggles too. I'm just trying to say, instead of me fighting with somebody else, I'd do a whole lot better if I would fight with myself. Fight the battle within you. Got it pretty good now? So we established that there is a battle, and there's a lot of it, but let's pick up, and we're going to keep moving now. Here we go. We just tried to give a little intro. Here we go. So this war within, it's, a, it's an evident thing. There's a war raging inside of us, okay? Taylor, title of today's message, could you say it? Living in the what? Help me. Living in the now. So... The war within part two. How can I fight my inward battle? How can I fight my inward passions? How can I fight my negative mind? I can fight, I'm no good, nobody loves me, uh, you know, whatever. It can be a number of things, okay? It can be vices that you have, major struggles, desires that aren't right. How do I fight that? Well, there's an actual war that's raging, so how do you fight it? Let's pick it up and see what we can find, Raj. Here's how we fight it. Number two, number two, you're not going to like this. Okay, here it is. Here's how you do it. There's a way out and it's called what? One more time. There's a way out and it's called what? Repentance. You and me would do a whole lot better if we fought our own battle and we repented instead of somebody else. Got it? And this is how, I, I, I'm not going to get God's favor by pointing out somebody else's problems and pestering them to death. I'm a good Christian because, see, I put people down for Jesus. I just don't think you're going to get the favor of God that way. Amen? But you will get the favor of God if you repent. Let's just examine that. So how can I fight my inward battle, my inward struggle? Because so much of the favor of God depends on how I fight that battle. So I want to get some help. How can I be spiritually victorious in my life? Say that with me out loud. Stop thinking you are. And do what? Let me ask you something. Do you think the Lord might favor you if you stop thinking you big stuff? And you humble yourself before the Lord. You just think he might like that. Yes or no? Let's see what James says. He gives more grace. Wherefore he says, say that part with me. God resists the proud, but he gives the what? Grace to the humble. You want the favor of God? Repent. You want the favor of God? Humble yourself. 
and see if he won't lift you up. Let's keep looking. James, would you help us? Say this with me out loud. We're talking now. We're, we're trying to find some favor. We're trying to get some help. Say that out loud with me. Submit yourself, your life, your future, your everything to the Lord. Turn totally to God. Now, I'm talking about this inward battle, this battle. Do you think he'll like that, yes or no? Oh, yeah. You think he'll like that better than a check? Or better than I went to church, I checked that out. We have so many rules we keep. So many little things we do, and we think we're earning the favor of God. When actually, he cares about you. He cares about your life, what's inside of you. He cares about your integrity and your honor and your holiness. You hear me? Read that verse with me. I'm just having, we have a Bible study now. Say that part with me. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Now, that's what repentance is. Repentance is humbling yourself with the battle you're facing, with your life, not, not your wife's life, not your husband's life, not your neighbor's life. No. Your life and turning to the Lord. That's what repentance looks like. Then say that last part with me. Look at that verse. Resist the, and heal what? So how do I have favor with God? Well, I've got to fight my battle. My battle, not your battle. I've got to look at me, not you. That's how I fight my battle. I've got to humble myself. I've got to turn to the Lord. And here's the cool thing. When I do that, there's something else happening at the same time. I am resisting the devil. Did you hear me or not? I got to resist the devil. I resist that devil. How you do that? How you do it? Oh, shut off the news. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, but if that's humbling yourself, if shutting off the news is humbling yourself, then I agree with that. But if shutting off the news ain't humbling yourself, then it's not. The answer is this. Here's the answer. You just read it. Slow down a little bit. You humble yourself. You humble yourself at the Lord's feet. Okay? You humble yourself. That's how I'm going to resist. This is showing I'm resisting the devil. When I turn from him... Something when I turn to the Lord, something simultaneously is happening. I am resisting Satan. Because Satan doesn't want you to do this. And then I believe the favor of God kicks in. Okay? Your conscious, everyday submission to God is resisting the devil. Say that out loud with me. Your conscious, everyday what? Submission to God is my what? That's how I risk the devil. When I submit to the Lord... I am resisting Satan. No man can serve two masters. So when he is my master and I turn, this war that I'm fighting within, and I turn to the Lord, that is in effect resisting Satan. Do you hear me or not? Okay? Just keep, just keep looking, okay? So when you, turn your, when you turn to God, you're turning your what? Back on who? Because they're, diametr they're diametrically opposed. They're totally opposite, okay? So we're talking about fighting this battle, this inward battle, having God's favor in my life. So, so far we've learned we've got to humble ourselves. We've got to submit to the Lord. And as we do that, we're also resisting Satan. Say that with me. We want to have, we want to have his favor. We need to do what in this battle? We need to what? Get real what? Get real close to God. Look at what James says next. Draw nigh to God. The word is near. Draw near to God. But guys, don't miss this. You're not going to draw near to God unless you humble yourself. Did you hear me? And, and in, in the truck this morning, I prayed with the guys. We do it every week. And they sort of pray with me and get me ready to go in here. But you know what the prayers were today in the truck? They were, Lord, you've humbled us. And you're humbling us here in, in our community. 
Now, if you didn't, if you were one of the ones that didn't get flooded, I get that. But there was still fear. You were, how many were fearful? Any, any hands want to show some fear? How many left town totally? You just left. Look at that. That's a lot of fear to get on the road and drive somewhere, ain't it? So he humbled you, didn't he? Did you think you were big stuff when you were leaving town? Look at me, I'm bad, baby! You couldn't do anything but drive. And you couldn't even do that if you're caught in line. I mean, this, this has a humbling effect on us. So is that a bad thing? No. Is it a bad thing to be humbled, yes or no? It is never a bad thing to be humbled. Humility is a good thing. It doesn't matter how you get there. How many were humbled in a marriage that just broke your heart? Anybody want to raise a hand? Humbled. Humbled. But at the same time, how many would say it was terrible, though? It was hard on me. Isn't it nice that God can take the crap that we go through in life, and if we humble ourselves, he will lift us up. That's what I'm talking about, this battle, the favor of God. So much of it has to do with our fight. Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Read that part with me. Cleanse your hands, you what? Sinners. And purify whose heart? You what? You crazy people. See what I'm saying? How can I have the favor of God? Well, we've given a whole lot of messages on this, but today we're honing in on something. If I'm going to have the favor of God, I've got to fight for it. Who have I got to fight? The man? The government? Yourself. 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 You're the biggest problem you have. Well, I heard you say that before, but you're still the biggest problem you have. Yeah, yeah accountability is nice, but the bottom line, accountability don't come in front of humble. You have to be humble, period. And being accountable to somebody else is nice. Now, normally don't answer questions from the audience, but you just have to be sitting there. Okay? But the bottom line is, we can throw all kinds of words at it. Accountability and this and that and all the other. How about stick with the Bible? Humble yourself at his feet. I'm the screw up. I'm the problem. Start with me. Look at me. You hear me or not? And a storm... Problems, anything in life, if it can get you to the place to where you start to fight your battle, I think that's a good place. Amen? I'm not angry. You know I just holler. <laughs> See, there's my mind again. What does she think? Did I hurt her feet? See how my mind works? Get real close to God. How does that happen? It's done through the what? So my question would be, if you want the favor of God, are you in God's word? Are you reading God's word? Are you soaking up God's word? Then don't act like you got the favor of God. Are you praying? I'm not talking about little lay me down to sleep prayers. I'm talking about in a, in a, in a con continued state of prayer. I'm not saying you go around la, 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 all day long. I'm just talking about you're thankful, or if you need something, or if you're hurting, or you're struggling, is God just a prayer away where you can chat with Him? And number three, through worship. You might wonder, why do you have church, Clark? We don't need church. Well, we preach His Word here, we pray here, and we worship here. I'd say we're doing, I think we're needed. How many hugged my neck today? How many I hugged you personally? Can I see your hands? I hugged you personally. You, you, and you, and you, and you, and you. How many, though, you didn't get a hug from me, but you got a hug from somebody today at this church? Can I see your hand? That's why we're the body of Christ. Gary, don't do it all. I do what I do. You do what you do. It makes a pretty nice place. Amen? Keep looking. How do I fight my battle? 
How do I get real close to God? Would you say that with me right there? That's a huge problem for most people. Say that right there. Be absolutely what? And what? Most people are phony. Most people are fakes. It's something I struggle with. But the way I, the way I conquer some of my phoniness and fakeness is by being just who I am, wearing the clothes I wear, talking the way I talk. And not trying to put on an air. You hear me? We, we struggle with being real and not being fake. I'm just talking about how do I fight my battle? How do I get close to the Lord? Well, it's interesting, though. The thing about humility, when you've been humbled, isn't it amazing when you've been humbled? <laughs> Especially when other people know it. When other people know your crap like you're naked or something. All that funny sort of go, a phony goes out the window, don't it? Yes or no, amen. So that's why humility is an awesome thing. Problems are okay. Problems are good things. Being humble is not a bad thing, okay? So I'm talking too much probably. Here we go. Let's keep looking. We're talking about how to fight this battle, how to, how to have favor with God. Say that with me. Repent of what? And what? In your life. Amen. A lot of times, I don't spill all my dirty laundry to you, but I do share a lot of my dirty laundry with you. But I think that's okay. I would rather you not like me for who I am than to like me for who I'm not. Amen? So you can tell anybody in town, your pastor's crazy. Your pastor has to work real hard at his marriage, and sometimes it's not easy at all, period. It's okay. Amen. I hope they're not mad. Amen. Maybe. Amen. Keep looking. Be afflicted, James says. Mourn. For who? Weep. For what? Yourself. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Let your joy be turned to heaviness. What does that mean? God wants us to look at our life and problems in our life. He need, if this battle we're going to face, he needs us to call it sin. He needs us to weep over our sin. He needs us to stop thinking it's funny. You hear me or not say? Well, I went to church and put my money in the offering, so I'm good with God now. Bless me, Lord. He's like, stop playing the game. Here's a quote of mine. I'm going to be famous one day. Would you say it with me? Sad ain't bad. When you sad over your what? Say it with me one more time. You're, 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 you're going to sleep. Here we go. Sad ain't when you over your. It's funny. We'll get sad over other people's sins. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do that some. But guys, I think the battle is when you sad over yours. You hear me? Continue to stay humble if you want to fight this battle. Down before the feet, feet of the Lord and under his authority. Humility is the key. Humility is the key. James repeats it again and again and again and again. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he'll do what? He'll lift you up. We're going to run fast to the finish here. The way up is always what? The way up is always down. Because when I'm up, look at me. I'm up. Everything good. I'm up. I'm up. This is when I go crazy. But when things are hard and I'm down, he's got my attention. Living in the now, this is how we're supposed to live our life. Third thing is this, and we'll quit with this, this section right here. So here I am, I'm fighting my battle. There's a war that rages inside of me. Repentance and getting real close to God is the key to me having victory. But then James says this, be careful. He says there are some wrong responses. And the first one he says is this, say that out loud, don't what? But it's so much fun to fight somebody else instead of my own battle. James said it's in the Bible. He's talking about having, you know, closeness to God. Here's what he says. You're just screwing yourself up. I want the favor of God. But we bypass humility. And it's funny, when you're humble, you don't do this. When you're humble, you don't judge people. 
Have you noticed how that works, yes or no? How many of you were very humbled in your life? Something happened really, really bad in your life, and boy, did it ever wake you up and humble you. Anybody want to raise a hand? And man, it woke me up. When that happened in your life, you probably didn't have as much trouble judging people, did you? Maybe the one that hurts you, I get that, but I'm just talking about in general. When we get knocked off our, you know, what? yeah, the pedestal or something, it, it gets a little easier. So James says, be careful here. He says, speak not evil of one another, brethren. He that speaks evil of his brother, and what? Judges his brother, speaks evil of God's word or the law, and judges the law. Because God's word tells us not to do that. But if you judge the law, then you're, a doer, then you're not a doer of the law, but you're a what? We try to use the Bible to judge people when we should be judging ourselves. And he tells us in his word not to judge other people, but to judge ourselves. But we instead judge other people and don't listen to the word. So in, in, in the end, we become a judge of that person and God. <laughs> We're not obeying his word. We like it our way better. It's lunaticville. There's one law, law, a lawgiver, one who's able to save and destroy. Who are you that does what? You might be getting lost. Say that out loud with me, please. Don't lose focus by looking at the failures of. How about one more little poll? How many you got, you got off focus in your life? You got off kilter in your life? Because you started looking at the failures of other people instead of your own life. And it got you depressed. It got you angry. It got you mad. How many would raise a hand and say, I did that? I focused too much on them and not on myself. This is good teaching right here. We are never going to be able to effectively fight the war within if we take our eye off the ball. Now, that's the way I talk. I had a football player. He's sitting right over here this morning. Son, do you play football right there? You? You see me pointing at you? You ever played football? Did you play any sport? You play some football. Okay, I'm going to talk. What's your name? Ben? Ben. You watch football, Ben? Because I do too. I'm a football guy. Okay? Have you, ever seen, have you ever seen a wide receiver, Ben? He's wide open. Wide open! The, the guy that was guarding him fell down. He fell down! And the quarterback throws the ball. We'll use you, Ben. Throws it to Ben. There it is. And there's nothing in front of you, Ben, except green grass and the goal post. You see him down there? The end zone. You're wide, wide open. He's just one guy. You're it. The ball comes. There it is. But you sort of look at that green grass. You start thinking touchdown, Ben. A three-year-old could catch it, Ben. Ben. How many have seen that in a football game? Yes or no? Ha! To be a Minnesota Viking fan sees this all the time. <laughs> Unbelievable. But that's what happened, Ben. The guy, the ball, the quarterback throws the ball. There he is. There's nobody around him. He's got a touchdown. All he's got to do is catch it. But he started thinking touchdown. He got away from humbling himself. As a football player, you need to humble that ball right into your body. And then you can run Ben. How about that? Amen, Ben? You got it? So in the Christian life, in fighting our battle, it's so easy to get our eye on judging somebody else. And we will miss the ball. Is that clear or not? Almost done with the message. Thanks, Ben. I'll go home later, Ben, and worry did I hurt Ben's feelings. <laughs> but for about that long, Ben. Anyway, here we go. Go ahead. Don't put off getting right with God, guys. You want the favor of God? You want to fight this battle? Don't put it off. Go to now, you that say today or tomorrow we're going to go to such a city, continue there, year by sale, get game. Whereas you don't even know what tomorrow's going to be. How many had plans on Thursday or Friday of last week and you had to change them? Let that be a lesson to you. Live in the now. Make good decisions today. What's your life? It's even a what? 
a vapor that appears for a little time then vanishes away. I love these scriptures. You ought to do this. If the Lord wills, we're going to live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings, and all such rejoicing is evil. Do it today. Get right with God today. Get close to God today. I'm talking about fighting my battle so I can have the favor of God. Don't judge other people. Live in the now. Don't put off getting right with God. Now, here's something else I want to say. Face your problems. You're almost done. Do it today. Do it today. Would you say that out loud? Procrastination will kill you in war. And you might not like me for saying this, and I really don't care. I get an opinion too. But I think the way for Israel to have 1,230 of their people, or whatever it was, slaughtered on October the 7th last year. Hamas, a terrorist organization, comes in, rapes women, chops off their feet, burns babies in ovens. I know it's, it's, you can't even wrap your head around such evil, can you? So Israel begins to retaliate and take Hamas out. And what did we do as the United States? We told them, well, you know, be careful. Don't go so far. Don't, 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 you know, you need to slow down. You need to not do this. You need to not do that. And that war still rages a year later. And now more people are killed than would have ever been killed if they didn't procrastinate. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, that's my strong opinion on this. And now what's happened? It's spilling over into the Middle East. Now, Hezbollah, you give somebody time, and other people can climb on board. And I get that. But here's my point. Procrastination. And we as the United States help procrastinate that situation. And you might not like me for that. I don't care. I think I'm telling the truth. But what's Israel doing now in that war? Well, they picked it up, haven't they? Yes or no? And they, you know, I don't know how it's going to end, but I know this. I know this. They're taking cues from us, but they're not taking quite as many cues for us. I've heard generals say now that Israel, Israel has now become the leader in our world. They're the ones that's really going after terrorism right now. Okay? But I don't blame them after the slaughter of 1,200 and something people at a, at a concert. Is that correct? It's ridiculous. It's crazy. Now, you say, why do you say that, Clark? I just say that to get you agitated. No. I think it makes, back it up, back it, back it up. I think it just makes the point in your life. If you have a battle going on and you say to yourself, well, let's, let, well hold on now, hold on now. Take it easy now. You know it's sin. You know it's not right. But you just go ahead and play with it. Procrastinate. Put it off. Don't be surprised if a year from now your life's not screwed up. Did you hear me? Next slide, buddy, please. Here we go. Act what? In your life and in my life as we fight, fight our own battle. And act when? Do it when? Now, this is, I'm talking about favor. I think, I, I think I'm on to something. One of my favorite quote, quotes, would you say that with me? Tomorrow, really. You know why tomorrow never really comes? Why? Because when you get to tomorrow, it's going to be what? Today. No, it won't be tomorrow. It'll be today. Okay, yeah, tomorrow really never comes. I do it tomorrow. It ain't no, what's tomorrow? It's today. So why not do it today? Why not get right with God today? Not tomorrow. You don't know you got a tomorrow. All you got is a today. And if you get another day, it'll be another today. I know I'm crazy. You know this. Some bad grammar for you. I do this to tease you. Don't do nothing. What do I mean? Therefore, to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it's what? If you don't fight your battle and fight it right away and fight it today, God's not. He is not proud of you. He is not pleased with you. He wants you to fight, and he wants you to do it, and he wants you to do something about it. You hear me? Is that too hard on y'all today? Had a hurricane, I beat you up. Don't do nothing. Don't say, oh, well, that's life. 
That's what a lot of people are doing with our country right now. I, I can't believe that people would say letting, having 11 million or 13 million people just cross our border, wide open border, that we go, oh, well, that's okay. Guys, if laws don't matter, or you can steal 950 bucks of stuff, if you don't go over 950, you don't, you're not going to get arrested. Have we lost our mind? And I can point out the country. I'm not point, trying to point out people per se. But what I'm trying to say, you can see what happens when we don't fight a battle, our battle with the end, by doing the right thing. Uh, things go downhill, buddy. It'll go downhill in your life. There's a war that's raging. Doing nothing is what? Let's thank the Lord for his word. We're done. Amen. All right. All right. I know that was hard on you. Come on. Praise the Lord. Stand on up. I was late today. How many are going home to a dark house? So you're happier to be here, aren't you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, but no, the Vikings have a bye today. That's why I'm along. Uh, that's, that's an evil man. Ain't it? That's an evil man right there. That's an evil man. Come on. Let's pray together. Here we go. Come on. Hang in here with me. Lord, thank you for a great day at church. I pray this word found good ground. Lord, I wasn't going to preach this long. I was tired. But, Lord, I got energy, and I appreciate it. I thank you, Lord, for letting us make it through this part of the scriptures together. I pray we've learned today, Lord, that we are our biggest problem. Individually, I am the biggest sinner I know. I don't know other people, what other people do. I don't know their heart. But, Lord, I thank you for that truth. Lord, I thank you for your word that says that if I'll humble myself, I'll submit myself, I'll turn to you, I will also be resisting Satan. Thank you, Lord, for your word that tells me not to procrastinate. Don't think I've got it tomorrow, but do it today. So, Lord, burn this word into our heart. I know you'll be pleased with us. We want your favor on our life. But, Lord, it's something we're going to have to fight for. I believe that with my heart. Help us to eat this word up today. Humility is a good thing. It doesn't matter how we get there. So, Lord, many of us in this room, we've been humbled by many different events in our life. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the fire. Thank you for the trials. Thank you for the flood. Thank you for... Even at times, the fear, if it drives me to my knees and drives me closer to you, gets me to look at my life and what really matters. So thank you, Lord, for the hard times. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed this morning, guys, the biggest mistake you'll ever make is leaving here thinking you're going to heaven and your faith is not in Jesus Christ. I don't know what you've been taught or what you've been told, but God's Word is so clear that the only way a person can have their sins forgiven and have everlasting life is through a faith in Jesus Christ. He's God's Son. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. It's not something you can work for. It's something you must believe. And He tells us to believe it with our whole heart. Can I lead you in a prayer right now where you confess Christ as your Lord and Savior and you have a talk with God about your own relationship with Him? Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. I don't believe a church can do it. I don't believe giving money can do it or having a big education can do it or a nice home can do it. I believe only you can do it. And so, Jesus, I put my faith in you today. I put my faith in you, Jesus. I don't understand it all, but I choose in my heart to believe, Lord, that you're not lying to me, that you are God's only son. I put my faith in you, my trust in you, my hope is in you. Come into my life and live. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have an awesome day. Amen. See you later. God bless you. Amen. Be good. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for listening to me.
Woo, that was rough, wasn't it? 